Good morning and welcome to the Lighthouse Church. We're really excited, we're really expectant, we're really encouraged that you are with us this morning. It's such a privilege just to be able to come before God with our brothers and sisters in this way. I mean, 20, 30 years ago, you couldn't have done this, but we live in a privileged time. I mean, sometimes we think about what we don't have and we forget the amazing blessings that we do have. So we thank God today for the ability to meet in this way. I know it's not the way that we'd want. We'd all love to be in our churches, lifting our hands, raising uh, our voices and praising him. But we know in these times, it's not something we can do. And so this is the safest and most appropriate way we can gather. However, today's message is on personal holiness. It's not me preaching it, it's not from my house, and it's not from Drew, it's not his house. It's actually an online message that um, Pastor Drew heard a few weeks ago, recognised it, it really touched his heart, really challenged him and stirred him, and he wanted to obviously tell his church about it and show his church, us, and um, it wasn't the right time. But today, this Sunday, is the right time. And so we are going to share in that. And it's just an amazing privilege that we can take a message from all the way around the world, a now message, and hear it today and it speak to us because our God is timeless. Isn't that amazing? And I, just, oh God, I just pray that whatever we need to receive today, whatever we need to hear, Whatever we need to do, whatever we need to understand, I pray that, God, you would make it manifest in the experience and in the lives of those who are listening today. Lord, we recognise your word is timeless. And we recognise that your word is true. And we recognise your word is powerful and effective. And so, Lord, no matter who says it, where it's from, we want to receive it today. In Jesus' name, amen. Ezekiel 44. The Levites who went far from me, verse 10, when Israel went astray, who strayed away from me after their idols, they shall bear their iniquity. Yet they shall be ministers in my sanctuary, as gatekeepers of my house and ministers of the house. They shall slay the burnt offerings and do the work of the ministry, is what he's saying. And usher and sing and preach and teach. They'll do all of this. And they shall stand before them to minister to them. Speaking of the people. Verse 13. They shall not come near me to minister to me as priests, nor come near any of my holy things nor the most holy place, but they shall bear their shame and abomination which they have committed. Nevertheless, I will, I will make them keep charge of the temple. They'll work in the kingdom for all its work and all that has been done in it. But the priests, the Levites, the sons of Zadok, this is a different group, who kept charge of my sanctuary when the children of Israel went astray from me, they shall come near to me and they shall stand before me to offer me the fat and the blood, says the Lord God. They shall enter my sanctuary. They shall come near my table to minister to me and they shall keep my charge. Listen to this. It shall be that whoever enters into the gates of the inner court they shall put on linen garments. No wool shall be upon them while they minister in the gates. They shall have linen turbans on their heads and linen trousers. Um, you can get a detailed listing of length of these trousers in the book of Exodus, the uh, 28th chapter. It talks about they would the trousers would be from the waist to the thigh, which... Some translations even say linen underwear, linen underwear. They shall not clothe themselves with anything that causes sweat. And some of you are wondering, what in the world is he going to preach today? <laughs> we'll see. 
But I, I do want to talk to you about something that I think is a, a, a fresh word from the Lord. And I'll give you the title when I figure it out. <laughs> Eli was the high priest and he had forgotten what it was to be in the priesthood. He had forgotten what the priesthood was all about. The Bible said that he was very heavy, obese, and any time it lists details, that's giving you a spiritual type. It's not there by accident. It's given a spiritual type. He has become consumed with flesh. The Bible said that he was lazy, that he had become undisciplined. He was blind. We're told that also. He had lost his vision. He had been in ministry so long that he's fleshly, he's undisciplined, he's lazy. He has no vision, and he would not discipline his sons. They were totally immoral, and he would not straighten them out and call them out and deal with them. They were sleeping with women in the church. Eli was a mess spiritually, and he was in the priesthood. His family was a mess, too. He was doing church stuff while all kinds of immorality was going on. I've got good news, so just relax, but I've got to give you the bad news and then the good news. Personal sin, according to this text, does not stop. Personal sin does not stop ministry in a person. This has been a mystery to many of us who have sat back for years and years and years and watched people who could minister in amazing gifts that God had given them and even under an anointing. And yet, privately, they were living in sin. It puzzled me for years. Romans 12 said, The gifts and the calling of God is without repentance. Romans 11, 29, The gift and the calling of God, when God gives a gift, He does not take it back. He does not say, no longer will this gift work. Things can go on, bad sin can be happening, and for a season, God will allow that person to continue to function as normal. And you may say, well, that's a good sermon for ministers, but I'm not a minister. This is a sermon to priests, and the Bible said in Revelation that you're a priest under your God. Under the new covenant, it's the priesthood of the believers. It's not an elite group of preachers. It's the priesthood of the believers. Any of us who are believers are priests under our God, according to Revelation. Ecclesiastes said, because judgment is delayed, men think they get away with it. When your attitude as, as a believer becomes it's easier to get forgiveness than permission, you're in trouble. When your attitude becomes I want to do it and I'm not asking, I'm going to do it. Sometimes we look at people with great anointing and great blessing and say outwardly, we see success. Outwardly, we see great things God is doing and using them. And if we're not careful, we think that we can judge by the outward. And the truth is, they may seem like a wonderful man of God, but you might need to ask their wife. You might need to ask their children. In this text, God was saying, I see that there, is, there are two priesthoods that are in my house, in my temple. One is the priesthood of Eli, and they are off, and they're, they're wrong, and they're not do, living right, and they're ministering. And he said, I'm still going to use them for a period. I'm still going to let them have ministry in my house. And notice his wording, they will minister to them, but they will not come near to me. Because I love my people so much. If they can sing, I'll let them get up and sing. I'll let them play instruments. I'll let them teach. I'll let them preach. I'll let them use their gift. 
And I'll give them time to get right. I'll deal with them. I'll convict them. And I'll just let them minister to them. Because if somebody can sing and somebody can play or somebody can preach, they can minister to them. The word won't return void. What they're singing can be about Jesus and it can transcend their personal life and how they're living. God's gift is without repentance. He doesn't take it back. And they can still do it and it can minister to them because God loves his people so much he'll use a donkey. He loves his people so much he'll use a whale. He'll use a worm. He'll use anything. He did all of that in the Bible. If you don't know what I'm talking about, he used these, these a, a, a jackass, a donkey to preach to Balaam. He loves people so much that he'll use anybody because, because here's what you've got to understand. There is the priesthood of Eli. And it's one that's impure. It's one that compromises. It's one that says, I can live like I want to live and my gift still works. Judgment doesn't immediately come. But listen, God can be blessing your socks off. Business person, your gift may be making money and God can be blessing your socks off and, in, he, and sometimes and many times he does it in spite of personal sin. He's so gracious. He's so kind. He's so long-suffering and patient with us. Now in Ezekiel 44 and 11, he said, They shall minister in my sanctuary. They will stand before them, but they shall not come near to me. These priests are sinning. Ministry will continue to flow through them to the people, but they will not minister to me, God said, they will not have intimacy with me. They will not come into the holy place. They will not come near me. And I don't know, maybe you've seen this. I read that for the first time not too long ago. And it just hit me. My God, that's one of the scariest scriptures I can ever imagine. That my ministry is all about outward performance. And I'm ministering to them through the gift. I can preach. God, I, if I got drunk last night, I could walk in here and grab a microphone and preach. And the gift would work. It would give, God would give me grace for a season. I didn't, so just relax. I don't, so just relax. I could see you. Yeah. No, I, I, it's all right. Just breathe. I know where I'm going. My point is this. My point is this. You can minister to people, but you don't touch God. You don't come near God. And what kind of priesthood do you want to be? Do you want a walk that looks religious outwardly and everybody thinks one thing, but personally you're unclean? My gift will work for a season, no matter how, what I'm doing. But I'll never get near God. I want to be the person that has fun, that lives life, that enjoys life, and has success. But I want to be pure. I want to be clean. I want to be holy like Jesus. I want to be sanctified and set apart. I want you to turn to your neighbor and I'm going to let you preach the title of my sermon to your neighbor. Turn to your neighbor and say, are you nasty? I can't tell by how successful you are. I can't tell by how you sing. I can't tell by how good you play. I can't tell by how religious you look ushering. The issue is, in God's eyes, when he looks beyond the surface, does he see the linen underwear, meaning personal holiness, in areas of your life that people cannot see? That's the issue. He said, the Levites, on the other hand, there's the Eli priesthood and they're corrupt and unclean. But then there is the priesthood in verse, in verse 15, he says, the Levites that have kept my charge, when the rest of them went, aslay, went, went astray, they shall come near to me. They shall minister unto me. They shall be clothed with linen underwear curse of man. And then he said, because I don't want them to sweat. 
The curse of man was the sweat of the brow. When Adam fell to sin, God said the curse will be you'll have to produce everything by the sweat of your brow. But he said, I don't want you sweating. I want you to come into my presence and it's not your ability and your talent. It's your relationship with me that's more important. And, and you'll minister to them more effectively because you minister to me first with the life that you live, a personal life holiness nobody knows what you have on up under the priestly garment nobody knows what color your underwear are we're not going to check nobody knows if you have on underwear only God and you know and that is exactly what he was saying in my text that's why he talked about the un only God and you know personally, if you're living the life. You remember, I, I didn't say this at first service, I probably shouldn't in this one, but I had it in my notes. You remember when they used to say, when we were growing up, mom, if we were going somewhere fancy or something, m mom would say, put on your good underwear. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why. If you might be in a wreck. Y'all remember that? You might be in a wreck. <laughs> what difference does that make? <laughs> Underwear doesn't show external. Only you and God know for sure if you have it on or not. God in this text is talking about personal holiness. It's private, it's personal. It's internal. And he says, you can have one of two relationships with me. Both have a relationship. Both want a relationship with God or they wouldn't be in the house. And there's only two kinds of people that I'm preaching to. Those who have outer court relationship with God. They've been saved. They've been born again. But they refuse to clean their internal world up. And God says, I'll use you and your gift and it'll be surface and you can minister to them, but you will not come near me. But there are others that will say, God, anything that you want to purge me and cleanse me and sanctify me of, take it out of my life. I freely give it up, take up my cross and follow you. And God says, come on in, come on in. And when you understand that, man looks on the outward, God looks at the heart. Man looks on the external, God looks on the interior. God knows what's on the inside. And if the priest tried to minister, this is in your Bible, in the book of Exodus 28, if he ministered without underwear or personal holiness, God killed him on the spot. Now, thank God we're under mercy and grace. And that's why I say that people that we've seen on, and, and national names and ministries fall and they function for months and weeks and even years. And outwardly, it looks so holy and so anointed, but inwardly, bad things were going on. And God in his, and this is not a ju judgment message. This is a message of how gracious God is. It's his mercy. It's his grace that we're not consumed, but he just keeps keep saying, I'll give you another chance. I'll give you another chance. I'll give you another chance. I still love you. You're still my child, but you won't come in near to me. Something will be missing. I can't tell by how big your ministry is, how successful you are. I can't tell by how much success you have as a business person, how who you really are. Because it's possible, according to this text, to be functioning in your gift and doing remarkable things, but not be intimate with God. And everybody looking at you saying, oh, look at how holy, look how great. And, and, and the truth is, the truth is, God says both are in my house. Everywhere good results are happening doesn't necessarily mean 
that it's clean, it's pure, and it's acceptable to God. I don't want to just minister to them. I want a ministry that ministers to Him. Right now, there are two priesthoods. Both are serving the Lord at Free Chapel. They're ministering to the people. They're ushering. They're keeping the children. They're parking the cars. They're singing in the praise team. They're playing the instruments. They're preaching and teaching. They're pastoring and visiting the flock. They're taking, leading small groups. Two kinds of priesthoods. Both are serving the Lord. Both are ministering to the people. But one gets intimacy with God and one doesn't. One is accepted and one is held at arm's length. And it's not God's decision, it's yours. The difference is linen underwear, that which cannot be seen. It's not what's going on in a person's public life, it's what's going on in their private life that really matters. And here's the thing I really felt, God's getting ready to change the priesthood on some people if they don't get it right. Saul had no idea his replacement, David, was growing up in his house. And when he was playing the harp, he had no idea that that, that, that was his replacement because God was long-suffering. But he said, I've given you long enough. Moses had no idea, or, or, or I should say Pharaoh had no idea when Moses was sitting at his table, a little baby eating cornflakes, just eating and looking up. He had no idea. He was so powerful. Everything outwardly looked like it was wonderful in Egypt, but he didn't know that Moses was being raised up to replace him. The Pharisees looked so holy in their black robes and their garbs and they walked around praying and fasting in public and everybody said, holy, holy, holy. And they had no idea that they were being replaced by a tall, lean, humble Galilean by the name of Jesus who's saying, I'm moving that ministry and I'm replacing it with pure, real ministry. You're either of the priesthood of Eli or the priesthood of Zadok, which can come near unto me, God said. Eli's ministering. God's not in a hurry. He's long suffering. He lets you go on and on and on and on and blesses you and blesses you and blesses you and people think that that's God winking at you. He's not winking at you. Ministry, Eli's just ministering, corrupt and immoral and dishonest. And his boys are looking at mess on the internet, and sleeping with women in the church, unclean, impure, doing drugs, getting high, smoking cigarettes. I shouldn't have said that. I got a bunch of you mad at me, but <laughs> might as well go for broke this morning. Just get it all out. Somebody said, you think I'll go to hell if I smoke cigarettes? No. No, you're not going to go to hell. You're going to get to heaven quicker than I am. That's, that's, the, that's the issue. I'm vaping. Why don't you just get rid of all that stuff? It's not doing you any good. It's not doing you any good. God wants you to smoke here to put a chimney on your head. I tell you what, I'd rather have somebody who, who smokes than somebody who talks about people. And I'd rather have somebody who Maybe it's not as strong in some area, but they got a good heart. And you know what the difference is? They want to do right. They may fall. They may stumble. They may mess up. They may really, 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 and, but they want to do right. And God knows the difference between people who are faking one thing and projecting one thing, but in their heart they don't want to do right. And the person who stumbles and falls and they want to do right, God's grace will every time will come and say, come on, get up, get up, get up. I can deal with you. I can't deal with that outward stuff, but I can deal with somebody in their heart who just wants to do better. 
I'm not perfect. Don't get it wrong. Not at all. But I want to be. I want to be like Jesus. Every day. That's why I have to say I'm sorry sometimes. And that's why I have to repent a lot. And that's why I have to pray a lot. And that's why I have to read this book a lot. Because I want to be like Jesus. To be... I guess what I'm trying to say is this. To be used by God is a precious thing. Treasure it. Guard it. Don't play with the anointing. Don't play with giftings. Don't play with talent. Don't play with God's favor and success because I'm not talking about God's gonna, not going to save you and you're not going to go to heaven. But what I'm talking about is you can lose his favor. You can lose the touch of God. You can lose the precious anointing. And there is a difference between an Eli priesthood and a Zadok, those who have been with me. There are two priesthoods. There are singers who minister to people. But God said they, not, they won't minister to me. Their song won't minister to me. Their music won't minister to me. Their preaching won't minister to me. Their business that they're so successful at, it won't minister to me. It'll, it'll minister to people, but it won't minister to me. But then there's those, there, there's two kinds of musicians and music. That which ministers to people and that which ministers to God. And he said, if you're going to minister to me, if you don't want to be rejected by God, I'm not talking about salvation. I'm talking about being used mightily by God in whatever gifting he's given you in life. God is saying, in Timothy, a powerful verse, 2 Timothy 2 and 20, but in a great house, everybody say this is a great house. This is a great church. Let's, let's get happy about that. I mean, we, we could be in Podunk too, but we got a great church. We're taking that for granted. We've got a great church. And in a great house, there are not only, listen to this, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, wood and clay, they're, they're still vessels and they're in the house and they're saved and they're going to heaven. Some are for honor, some vessels of honor, some vessels of dishonor. Listen to the next part. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel of honor. Sanctified, the King James says, meek for the master's use. <laughs> so when you understand that, when you understand that there's vessels of honor and dishonor, he's demoting some, he's promoting some. Yeah, yeah. We're in an hour in a transition. 2 Timothy 2 and 19 said, Don't practice sin. Depart from iniquity. Let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from sin. Personal holiness. He said in verse 21, If you'll judge yourself, I won't judge you. Sit yourself down and stop it. And get on your knees and repent. And God says, I'll, I'll keep blessing you. I'll keep raising you. I'll keep promoting you. But if you ever get to the place that you're playing the game with Christianity, then you've got a season to make a change. There ought to be agonizing over sin. Anybody who wants to do right, God will help you. Zadok or Eli. Vessel of honor, vessel of dishonor. You want God's favor? You want God's blessing? Say, purge me. Just like that text said, purge me. If any man, notice it's not up to God to do it. He said, if any man discerns, I'm a vessel of dishonor in some areas of my life, and all of us are. 
but if a man will purge himself of those things. Just come humbly and honestly before God and say, Lord, purge me. Get this out of me. I ask you today to cleanse me. And never will you empty out that God won't pour in. Never will you. What, 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 what mother puts milk in a dirty bottle? She's going to clean the bottle and then she's going to put fresh milk in. And if you want God to use you, purge yourself. God will pour it in. And we'll be a real ministry. Not a ministry of perfect people. Ha. Huh. What a joke. There are no perfect people. None. But a ministry that is a people who are after God, who are not happy with anything in our lives that's not like God. I know this is strong and heavy, but you know what? This is the kind of preaching that'll get you to heaven. This is the kind of preaching that'll make you do an inspection on your soul. This is the kind of warning from the Lord in gentle nudges of love that I believe the Lord would say, you know, the difference between grace and mercy is grace is God's giving you what you don't deserve, but mercy is God holding back what you do deserve. And you don't know how he's held stuff back, just like he held the Red Sea back on both sides. And they probably, some of those kids probably didn't even know they were in danger, grave danger. But God's unseen hand was holding stuff back. And I feel a little warning to say, let's purge ourselves this morning. Purify. 